One of the neatest gadgets on earth is the human brain. And um, I'm the, the director of the Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging Center at Columbia University, and we look at a lot of human brains. And one of, our, one of the objectives is to look at brains, watch how they work, figure out how to make them tell us how they work, and then apply that to understanding uh, the human brain. Okay, so um, yesterday we had a very special privilege, and Dan came to visit us. And we put Dan in the scanner, and we made Dan work so that we could tell something about Dan's brain. Now, the, one of the neat things about human brains is that um, when they do things, that there's specific little areas in the brain that are working, and specific areas of the brain do specific things. And so if you ask Dan to do a very simple task, like just naming objects. Dan, remember naming the oh, yeah. objects? Oh, yeah, OK. So he's going, he's in the scanner, and the scanner's going. And we ask him to name a bunch of pictures that we um, put in front of him. And we see Dan's brain lighting up in these very special little little places. In fact, when you take the brain away, you can see the special little areas that are lighting up. And this little system in the brain means something to scientists, but even if you're not a scientist, you can say, okay, this is the part of Dan's brain that is involved in language. Now, Dan didn't come just into the scanner to learn about the little areas of his brain that are involved in language. He was really interested in gadget off. And in particular, he was interested in knowing if there was something very special about his brain and Gadgetov. He was quite agitated, I understand, when he came into the lab yesterday to do this. So we put him in the scan, and we asked him to think about um, whether he thought Gadgetov would be around next year. Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> And this is Dan's brain really worried about whether Gadgetoff was going to be around next year. Now, this looks kind of fuzzy, but to those of us who spend a lot of time looking at brains, this is really quite beautiful. These are, it's really quite a beautiful brain, actually. <laughs> it's a very oh, special so brain. Yeah. We'll take it out. And <laughs> no, it's very beautiful. Um, this is, um, we have what we call, I've just picked four slices that sort of represent his whole brain. This is sort of at the bottom of the brain. This is just up a little bit farther, um, almost to the top, and then pretty much at the top. So you can see almost all of Dan's brain is really worried about whether um, Gadgetoff is going to be around uh, next year. The um, uh, yellow represents, yellow and red and all these spots represent the areas that are active. And when the neurons in Dan's brain get really active, then the computer and the scanner knows that and we, we color those areas with these, um, the, the pseudo colors. And so, in particularly, this slice here fascinates me because um, normally if someone was just doing a, a language task, for example, like you saw, the, the object naming task, it was perfectly well ordered and we saw a beautiful little system working just naming objects. But when he got engaged in the gadget off issue, <laughs> his brain went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> So um, instead of just seeing little tools of the brain, like we would see Broca's area, Wernicke's area, some nice little things over here, we see the whole brain, both sides of his brain lighting up. So you guys have really got Dan going, let me tell you. <laughs> this is a special insight into Dan's brain. Um, so what we think we've discovered here in this little scientific experiment that we did is that there's a very special place in Dan's brain for Gadgetov. Thank you very much.